Welcome everybody to this Tegetic webinar today. My name is Patrick Nicholas. I'm part of the sales and account management team here at CCH Tegetic based in the UK. And I'm going to do a brief introduction to Tegetic this morning. Then I'm going to hand over to Matthew Forbert, who's head of FPNA, Amir at Ricardo, who's going to run you through their experiences of using Tegetic and specifically for um, some of the planning processes that they do within Ricardo. So first of all, about Tegetic, I'm just going to provide you a brief overview of Tegetic as a business. I'm going to look at the platform and its practical applications for the Office of Finance as well. So as a business, Tegetic has been around for around 25 years and we're part of the tax and accounting division of Waters Kluwer. We operate in what tends to get called the enterprise performance management space or CPM or EPM as it's sometimes called, and which really kind of covers the traditional areas of consolidation and planning. Our key differentiator in that market is that we have a single product which serves all of our customers across both the office and finance and beyond. So if you think of our traditional competitors in this space, the likes of Oracle, SAP and IBM, they all provide a number of different products for planning, consolidation, cost allocation and reporting, whereas Tegetic provides just one product in one single place. By providing a single source of the truth, customers don't have to move data in between different applications any longer. They don't have to update master data in lots of different places, and therefore it results in less time having to be spent spending long periods kind of reconciling data and reconciling the different structures between those applications. Data can be stored once and loaded once and served up to any process configured into Getic with a single shared entity structure, chart of accounts, and any other dimension which might be relevant to those processes. The core areas that Tegetic is particularly strong are in financial close and FP&A. Um, we cover the full end-to-end -end close process. So the single platform provides, for example, real-time insight into the end-to-end -end financial close workflow, as well as pre-built applications and modules for things like balance sheet reconciliations, for lease accounting for IFRS 16 and ASC 842, all the way through to financial consolidation, so into company, automated consolidation journals, producing the financial disclosures, and finally, IX Bureau reporting. For the webinar today, Matthew's going to be providing insight into his experience using Tegetic for salary planning, but Tegetic can be used for any type of planning, budgeting, and forecasting process. Common applications include cash flow forecasting, sales and revenue planning, um, things like CapEx and OpEx, but we even have big football clubs that use the system to forecast the impact of winning specific competitions or buying and selling players. And here in the UK, we have a large travel company that has a global rollout to Getic, and they plan right down to even the number of Mars bars they have on each trolley on every flight. So lots of different practical applications for how companies can plan using Tegetic. Tegetic's goal is to be the repository of choice for all financial, operational and regulatory data. So in order to support this, we've created a very strong data management layer which can integrate with any source system. We have the ability to load transactional data as well, which is something that most traditional CPM tools tend to struggle with. And what it does, it just really opens up the platform to provide much greater insight and visibility into the office of the CFO than has really ever been possible before. So that's just a very brief overview of Tegetic. I'm going to hand over now to Matthew, who's going to run you through um, his e experience of using Tegetic at Ricardo. Matthew, over to you. Thank you very much, Patrick. Um, so a little bit about Ricardo to start with. Um, when I put these slides together, um, we were uh, a, little, a little over 38 offices around the globe. Um, after the events of the last uh, few weeks and days, our CEO has now now said that we're, we're operating 2,700 offices as everybody's now, or a large number of our people are now able to work work from home and we set that up very quickly. So we're quite proud as an organization about how we've managed to respond to uh, recent recent changes. And I think our, um, our experience of using Tegetic as our business planning tool um, has really put us in good stead for um, being able to make some of that transition 
in in the um, in the optimum way um, and keep in place some uh, some good things like um, the governance of the business planning process certainly made my life a little bit easier. Um, if you look at the um, other areas that we're in, we're you know we're an automotive business, but with a big focus really on mobility. Um, so although we're an old business with that that kind of traditional uh, combustion engine petrol um, manufacturing aspect, and we've got certainly got that knowledge and capability. Um, we're 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 in a very um, interesting area at the moment because we are helping provide solutions to mobility with a with a fully integrated set of products. Um, so we we made a decision about 18 months ago to replace our existing budget model. We wanted something that was evolutionary, not revolutionary. And one of the things we were looking for in particular was deeper salary planning. Okay, so um, what were the advantages of using Togetic over Excel? Well, it makes the budget easier for future cycles as well as the current cycle. It's easier if you've got changes of um, employee or um, person in that role, because with the Togetic knowledge, it's 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 um, some of the um, aspects of the process can be embedded in in there. So so overall, using um, using Togetic against using Excel has enabled us to to deal with change better and also to um, integrate different areas of the business, particularly between group and divisions, but also finance and non-finance. Okay, so I'll tell you a little bit about the selection exercise. Um, to a certain extent, when I picked up to get it, it was a, a bit of a done deal because we'd used it for consolidation. Um, we had a good existing relationship with EOH. Um, we trusted their capabilities and we also trusted the solution. Um, it's a very scalable solution. Um, we started off with consolidation. We've done some work on IFRS 16, but in particular, the area I've been involved with in business planning um, has been um, enabled us to have a bit of a quantum leap in terms of the um, amount of information we can access in the system easily, the, the audit trail on the budget when we're reviewing actuals and variances, and a number of other factors. Okay, and it was important for us as well that we had really good um, connectivity with any data that was coming from um, other systems within our organization um, and especially around HR systems. So one of the key things for us as an organization was collaboration um, between these different departments and making sure that we produced a business plan and we continue to produce plans based around um, the input from all different parts of our organization. However, we also know, recognized that sometimes when producing a forecast, um, time is limited, and we needed to have a solution that could be um, flexible to how much time different people had to put in input and have a top-down approach uh, supported by a more detailed bottom-up approach where time permitted. Overall, the uh, solution gave us a step change in budget data quality. And I talked a little bit about the top-down budget. Um, this was very important. It was a driver-driven P&L model um, with um, the input by the end users of a number of KPIs. So for us as an organization, this is really chargeability, uh, rates of individuals, and also um, the headcount levels that we would be anticipating throughout the year, um, including um, uh, growth assumptions. And also then to support that top-down budget with the integration to a bottom-up budget. So we take those assumptions that have been looked at for the overall plan, and then we take them out to each of the departments, each of the department managers, and they assess their assumptions based around um, the employees they, they have in their department, any expected starters and leavers, um, transfers between departments, and um, overhead costs, um, use of assets, higher capital expenditure into company and revenue. And the revenue um, can be calculated in any number of ways because 
um, the solution can be quite bespoke in terms of um, how specific parts work with, with Togetic. So um, you can take a basic kind of core design based around the Togetic structures and then implement it to your um, preferred um, uh, preferred model or something that fits your business. Okay, so we had a timeline um, that was quite aggressive, really. We had to build and develop this um, on key dates for delivery. We, we had a clear scope at the start and the design based around our old Excel model. So it was an evolution of what we, we'd done in previous years using a new technology rather than completely changing um, our, our business model at the same time. Um, we had a dedicated resource to implement it and really recommend that this is a good approach. Quite difficult to immerse yourself in an implementation um, of something like this and get all the transfer of knowledge and the skills required if you're having to do a day job at the same time. And certainly that was the advice we had from um, EOH and that was the, the, uh, the way we approached it. And because of that, we were able to deliver this um, on time and to the um, desired quality and within cost. And I think that um, partly that was due to having our own dedicated resource internally and that we had some familiarity with, with the tool from previous implementations. But it was also um, largely due to the commitment of our implementation partners and um, the, 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 their ability to go a step further um, was, was really appreciated. And um, that, that's, that's something that, um, that we think helped to make this project a real success. So with it, within Togetic, there are core dimensions of FX, um, the scenario, so that can be actuals, budget, forecast, and, and it's quite customizable. All of these things are customizable. The period and also the entity, the entity being the, um, the division um, for, for Ricardo or different cost centers. So that we, we were fairly flexible in how we could we structured that. Um, so we went through kind of a standard sort of process for, for defining these requirements. Um, and then uh, we added some customization. So we had a couple of custom dimensions. And this is really where the, um, the tool can be used to, um, to basically you can model, play around with it and, and come up with something that really fits your organization. And, and those bespoke dimensions for us was, it was it contained things like our employees or our assets, things that were specific to the models we were developing. Okay, so we also mapped to data sources and ETLs, which is a, um, a togetic term for uh, the import and export data between systems, electronic transformation loading. And, and that was a core part of the design. Um, but also that's a part where um, certainly in the early stages of adopting togetic, you will need a lot of support because that's quite technical. Most of the other areas, if not all of the other areas, we, we got extensive knowledge of uh, to become largely independent during the implementation as an organization. So it's possible to, um, with, with the right approach, it is possible to, to really get the extra value from implementation, I think, by, by having dedicated resource and, and thinking not just about the initial project, but how you're going to want to use it in the future. Okay, so. Um, the forms and the reports for our, for our implementation were produced by our um, implementation partners. But again, since we have implemented, we have developed a number of our own forms and reports. Um, and only occasionally do we have to, you know, email email support or come across a particular um, thing that we'd like to do that we haven't done before. And that's when we're, you know, on the phone to the consultants or send them an email and we get, get a good response. And... Um, yeah, it's a, it's a good good continued journey. Okay, so here's a little view of the top-down model. As you can see, it was it was based around um, an existing Excel model that we had, um, where we could quickly um, flex assumptions on headcount, on um, the utilization of our staff, um, recovery per hour, which is a metric we use in the organisation for um, for costing, and number of other criteria, and it would calculate the, um, the headcount, the recoveries, the revenue, the costs. Um, and this model um, 
would then prorate to a full P&L. Um, so it's not just um, what you can see on the screen, we'd hit save and it would basically um, prorate this entire top-down process to the full organizational structure, which we've, we've loaded into the background. Um, and that, that meant really using a historic data set, um, you've got a budget by cost center and geography and by all the different entities within Mercado, these nine countries, ge geographical areas we were in, um, in an afternoon just by, you know, one person who's got the, the information on the latest view, keying it into this and saving it. That's obviously before the bottom up process where people validate those numbers and review them, but it enables a, an excellent starting position for the budget process. Okay, so the next challenge was to segue that to the bottom up process. So, uh, so the bottom up view, um, cost centers and departments um, input to this data to validate the top down assumptions. And within our organization, we sat down uh, one to one with each, um, each of the cost center managers. And we went through these templates doing salary planning, um, reviewing the all of the assumptions that were in there until we came to a, a sort of blended view of where we where we where were they thought they were gonna um, gonna get to in the year, um, plus other things like intercompany capital depreciation, um, order intake and headcount. Um, within Tegetic, we also have um, piloted the workflow budget model. Um, but we haven't put that into action yet, but we've got that all ready to go. Um, once, we're, once we're happy to, um, to uh, train the end users, but we felt it wasn't quite the right time. So we've, we've held that back for now, but certainly a powerful part of the, the toolkit is the, the workflow that, that can enable you to track completion of templates and things. So what are the benefits that we've received so far from using uh, Togetic for our business planning? We have more time for analysis. We're able to use the budget data to understand variances. We have full dashboard reporting. We have excellent version control and change tracking, something which we really struggled with with spreadsheets. We have minimal cost of ownership and we have shared tools and an increased knowledge throughout the whole group. Um, in terms of continuous improvements, um, post the budget, we've developed our own FBNA to getting database. Um, this has replaced some complex Excel models. Um, I, I used to get um, lots of interruptions from my current role with people um, who were unable to roll over or fix issues in the old Excel models. So it was uh, putting into place something that basically um, uh, automated that and made it a lot more structured was, was very worthwhile within our organization. Um, and we, we've also seen a real improvement in the type of um, things we can do with that data, looking at trends, automating. Um, and as I say, it's in a structure where we've got really good support as well from um, should we require to um, extend the system. And um, we, we relied on consultants to help develop the ETLs. But one of the things that's really important to mention is, and I think before, before you start um, the development of any um, Togetic model is, make, is put the time into the early stage of preparation, into the um, scoping of the uh, blueprint and the solution, and understand that in detail. Um, because it is much easier to um, get the 80% right than the 20%. And if you put the thought in up front, it really, really helps later on. So, what's next? Um, we have a fluid backdrop to the FY 2021 business planning. It's our second year using Togetic. Um, we're well set up to, um, to use the tool with remote office working in response to COVID-19. Um, we're able to evolve the model to adapt to changing operating model um, and responsibilities. And using an 80-20 rule, um, I mentioned that some of the solution is, is bespoke around your organization. And we've, we have many changes happening um, year on year within our organization. And we are able to keep up with those very well using Togetic. Um, the structures that we defined in there um, are really standing up to the test, the test of year on year changes. So um, we're using an 80-20 rule. We're gonna keep most of our budgeting the same this year. 
and we're just changing and tweaking a few things, uh, mainly using our own internal skills, but also um, with, with some additional support where required. We've, we've also, um, we're using the same data set to work on a five-year simulation model and a what-if model off the basis of our plan. And um, we have some plans in the future to perhaps build an allocation engine, a strategic what-if model, um, and roll out workflow and our rolling forecast model, uh, which we have made quite a lot of uh, work on, but at the moment are uh, we're just waiting for the right time really to introduce that to, to our end users within the organisation. Um, and this will hopefully reduce the amount of handholding um, within finance sometimes we have to do when we're trying to pull these things together. Okay, so they're all the things that um, we have planned for using Togetic. So what are the key takeaways really from this? A successful implementation, um, avoidance of scope creep, understanding key deliverables. Um, we use the process of sprint, consolidate sprint. And what I mean by that is we we had dedicated resource and we worked on a, a deliverable within a certain scope, then consolidated and then started again. Um, yes, it's a continuous development, but it's also something that, that requires focus in order to get it right. Um, we had dedicated resource. From that, we also got skills transfer within to the, into the organization, which I think increases the um, longevity of of the product within within the organization. And we have uh, a real culture of refinement and continuous improvement in response to business change and also to um, the uh, requirements of, of, of the organization and uh, putting the value in there which um, which they can they can use during any analytical process. So it's important to collaborate with all your key stakeholders in the budget process, in any budget process. Um, using Togetic um, makes that something that is seamless and um, it's also uh, key is to iron out any historic anomalies before you before you begin. Ensure that every employee is correctly represented in the new system and build strong lines of communication between the stakeholders. If you do all of those things, like us, you'll ensure a consistent update to the new system. So thank you for uh, lis listening to this and I will now um, hand over to Patrick. Thank you, Matthew. Thanks so much for that overview. Um, no problem. Really, I hope it's, hope it's good. Yeah, really okay. interesting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No it's been, I mean, it's interesting using the tool, and um, I think we, you know, we're really seeing the benefits of of some of the capability now. I think, you know, Ricardo's kind of quite a uh, forward-looking organisation, but I think that you'll probably have quite a lot of demand for your services, I imagine, at the moment, because it is a good tool to use in remote working and things like that, isn't it? It's yeah, good, that's it's right. And it's space. really good to hear yeah. hear that you've uh, kind of expanded out your usage from as you say from consolidation where you originally bought it four or five years ago and expanded it out to things like lease accounting and budgeting and planning and you know that's really where we see the most benefit from customers not just using it in isolated areas within finance but broadening it out to the wider community yes and uh, i think yeah. it's your 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 story about kind of the uptake and the usage of the tool and getting everybody on board is 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 really important. I think the most successful customers that we see are those that really embrace the tool, learn it, and are really able to become self-sufficient. So really good to hear your story today. Thanks, yeah. thank you very much, and thanks everybody for no diving problem. in. Brilliant.